Hello and welcome to today's lecture on minimizing switched capacitance. We shall continue our discussion on this topic and in the earlier lectures we have discussed about various techniques like hardware software trade off, bus encoding, clock gating, then use of different techniques like gated FSM, state encoding and FSM partitioning used in minimizing switched capacitance in finite state machines. We have also discussed upper end isolation and pre computation which are used to reduce switching, switching activity in combination and circuits. <coughs> now, today we shall first focus on how we can use a suitable number system in minimizing switched capacitance uh, before we discuss other techniques like architecture level optimizations, minimizing glitching power and um, various logic styles that can be used to reduce switch capacitance. All of us are using some number system in our day to day use and for arithmetic computation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, we also use some number system within the computer. Now, let us consider the number system that we use in our day to day system. We use what is known as decimal number system, decimal number system with radix of 10, then you can represent numbers using 0, 1 up to 9, 9 different symbols or numbers and of course, in addition to this you use positive and negative signs to represent uh, positive and negative numbers. So, this, this is typically known as sign magnitude representation, sign magnitude representation, where we use you know sign explicitly by a po by this symbol positive symbol and then we give the magnitude value say uh, we would like we would like to represent plus 10. So, we write plus 10. Similarly, if it is a negative number we represent it by a negative sign minus and so this is minus 10. So, this is how we normally represent numbers uh, in sign magnitude representation. However, whenever you are you are using a computer to do computation, obviously everything has to be in terms of zeros and ones. So it has to be represented by uh, binary values. So uh, sign is also given a binary value. Usually zero is used to represent a uh, positive number. A one is used to represent the sign of a negative number. So in sign magnitude form a binary value, binary uh, representation of plus 10 will be 0, then 1 0 1 0. So, this part is the sign and this part is the uh, magnitude. Similarly, uh, uh, the sign magnitude representation of minus 10 can be 1, then of course, the magnitude part will be remaining same. So, 1 and 10. However, the sign magnitude representation is not very convenient in implementing various arithmetic operations within the computer. That means, implementing addition, subtraction and other arithmetic operations cannot be done efficiently by using the sign magnitude representation. So, another representation that is being used that is known as two's complement representation. In two's complement representation, uh, the <coughs> usually we say I, the number is either 8 bit or it is a 16 bit and accordingly we uh, represent the various values. For example, this plus 10 in 8 bit representation of 2's complement form will be 0, then you will add 3 more zeros uh, and followed by the uh, actual magnitude. Similarly, the negative value of this has to be obtained in a little different way. What we normally do? We first complement the values say 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, this is being bit complemented. So, we make bit by bit complementation 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Then we add 1 uh, to get the uh, 2's complement representation of minus 10. So, we get 0, 1, uh, 1 0 1 1 1 1. So, this is the uh, this is minus 10 in 2's complement form and this is plus 10 in 2's complement form. 
So, this is how it is being represented inside the computer uh, when we perform uh, various arithmetic operations. We use a, a concept known as uh, sign extension. Suppose we have to add a 8 bit number, I mean suppose this is 8 bit value and another number is of 16 bit. So, how do you add this 8 bit number with a 16 bit value? That can be done by extend by sign extension of this number and convert it into 16 bit number, then perform the addition. That means, your adder will take uh, both the values 16 bit here also it will take 16 bit, but if it is a 8 bit number then it has to be converted into 16 bit by using the concept of sign extension. For example, if you do the sign extension of this my plus 10 it will become 0000 then 0000 then 0000 and then 1010. This is the uh, plus 10 uh, in, in 16 bit that means, 16 bit representation of plus 10. So, you have got so this part you can see are uh, nothing but sign extension. So, this is a positive number the sign bits have been extended to fill the remaining bits. Similarly, uh, minus 10 can have say 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 then 0 1 1 0. So, this is the minus 10 uh, in a sign extended form. So, uh, in the, the this way you can perform and numbers uh, perform uh, addition, subtraction and other things of uh, binary numbers in two's complement form and if their uh, magnitudes are not same, then we do sign extension to convert them uh, of the same number. So, this sign extension of binary numbers, two's complement numbers creates problem. What kind of problem it creates? Let us see. So, uh, as I have told in most signal processing application, two's complement is typically chosen to represent numbers primarily because the two's complement number system allows you to realize uh, adder and subtractor so addition, uh, hardware efficiently. Then sign extension causes MSB sign bits to switch when a signal transitions from positive to negative or vice versa take place. For example, uh, let us consider a situation where the number is changing from say plus 1 to minus 1 uh, uh, alternately, I mean may be in between 0. So, that means, the number is switching between plus 1, minus 1 and 0. Value is small and may be because of noise, because of other reasons it is changing over that uh, over 0 and it is becoming minus 1 or plus 1 or 0. You can see uh, how the bits will be changing. Say here plus 1 in 8 bit will be equal to 0 1 1 1 uh, sorry 0 0 0 it is a positive number. So, it will be 0 0 0 1 and uh, 0 obviously will be 0 0 0 0 in two is complement then 0 0 0 0 and minus 1 will be uh, you see that uh, you have to perform bit complementation of all these bits and then you have to add 1. So, that will make it 1. So, 1 1 1 1 all 1. So, you see if the uh, if the value changes from 0 to minus 1 you see the number of bits that will switch is 8. Similarly, uh, if the now if it changes from say minus 1 to plus 1 or plus 1 to minus 1 number of bits that will switch is 7. So, you see large number of bits are switching whenever we are representing in 2's complement form 2c form uh, to represent numbers. On the other hand, instead of representing numbers in 2's complement form, if we represent in uh, sign magnitude form, then you can see how the number of bits will switch. So, plus 0 plus 1 is uh, your 0 0 0 0 1 and 0 is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 and minus 1 is essentially 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 this is the sign and magnitude part is same as the positive number. So, in this particular case, so whenever you switch from say uh, 0 to 1 number of bits that switches is only 2. On the other hand, whenever you switch from say minus 1 to plus 1 the number of bits that switches is only uh, 1. So, this is a remarkable change in the number of bits that switches. That means, if the dynamic range 
of a number is small and if it switches sign very quickly, then it may lead to a uh, large uh, switching activity in case of uh, two's complement form. On the other hand, in uh, sign magnitude form, the number of transitions will be much less. This is the basic idea of uh, this, uh, this particular technique. Uh, as I have told, two's complement can result in significant switching activity when signals being processed uh, switch frequently around 0 and switching in MSB can be minimized by using sign magnitude represents as, as I have already explained. Now, let us see uh, uh, how we can really uh, use it uh, uh, or when in what, situ one situ situ in what situation we can use it. You see sign magnitude representation is useful for cases where large buses have to be driven. For example, you are using let us assume a microcontroller or microprocessor and this microprocessor is sending data to a maybe a digital to analog converter which is receiving digital data and producing analog corresponding value. Uh, at the output of the digital to analog converter. Now, here if the if 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 the values as uh, I mean the dynamic range is small and if that if the, the change is taking place over 0 and uh, if, if it takes place frequently then you can see large uh, switching activity will result over the bus. So, you are sending through bus and as you know the capacitance of this bus is quite large. So, this switching activity will lead to a uh, lot of uh, uh, I mean change in switched capacitance leading to high dynamic power dissipation. This however, can be minimized by using sign magnitude representation. In that case what you have to do? You have to add one converter. So, you, here you will see say 2 c 2 s complement to sign magnitude form and here at this end you have to add another uh, converter which will perform sign magnitude to two's complement form. So, if you add these to hardware, then before sending the data you can convert it into uh, sign magnitude form, then the sign magnitude uh, representation of data can be sent over this bus and on the other hand on the other side you can convert it back with the help of the sign magnitude to two's complement converter. And, uh, here uh, there is a uh, there is a if what is that if this can be done only when the addition of this two's com this converters two's complement to sign magnitude and sign magnitudes to two's complement converter is, is is essential and overhead so this overhead will add capacitance to the system so by adding this capacitance if the if it is if the switch switched capacitance is less then i mean is more then by i mean if it is uh, i mean by adding this if the switch capacitance is less than without adding this only then this is beneficial that means uh, what you have to do this uh, the overhead of converting back to two's complement is quite insignificant compared to the reduction in switch capacitance only in such situation you can use this type of technique and uh, let us uh, have some little more analysis of this approach. Here uh, data bus is of 16 bit, 3, uh, 3 sigma is 2 to the power 11. Here essentially this represents the dynamic range that means, the most of the uh, bits are changing over 11 bits the remaining 3 bits do not change much and rho that is your uh, known as uh, this is essentially known as correlation uh, convolution x n minus x n <coughs> minus 1 by rho square. So, uh, these, uh, these the, uh, the, ch the gain that will be that you will achieve will be dependent on uh, two things. Number one is uh, the dynamic range of the number and another parameter is correlation of the data bits. So, this correlation and the dynamic range will affect the performance of this uh, introduction of two's complement to sign magnitude converter and sign magnitude to two's complement converter. So, let us do some analysis and see uh, yeah here is the uh, you know 
transition probability that has been obtained for uh, for this particular situation where 3 sigma is equal to 2 to the power 11 and rho is uh, rho is 0 or it can be plus uh, it can vary I mean depending on the correlation of the data. And you can see when rho is 0 data is uncorrelated, uncorrelated means uh, it can become positive, it can become negative, it can become it is random. So, that means any bit can change probability of change of any bit is 50 percent. So, that is the reason why transition probability is 0 0.5. So, when it is uncorrelated all the bits can change uh, the probability of any bit to become 0 or 1 is same in such a case we get transition probability of uh, 0. And <coughs> the uh, this the bandwidth as I told is represented by log 2 3 sigma that is uh, your uh, and here you can see this is uh, essentially uh, the dynamic range is over 11 bits remaining 3 bits do not change much. Now, but of course, it depends on the correlation factor. So, if the data is uh, correlated what do you really mean by correlated? Correlated means what can happen if the, if the data may change like this slowly. So, in such a case over time if it changes slowly then we can say data is correlated that means the pre present value and next value are uh, correlated means uh, you know uh, they are very close and it is slowly going becoming positive then it is becoming slowly becoming negative. So, it is a, they are the data is correlated. So, when the data is correlated the correlation uh, then obviously the switching activity will be less as you can see and whenever uh, uh, rho is equal to 0.99 it is very much correlated. So, you can see of course, the lower order bits will change because dynamic range is higher and, uh, and you can see depending on the uh, correlation say if it is uh, 0 0.025 then you can see only uh, the, the, higher, the higher order bits and the, uh, these, these bits are uh, not changing much but lower order bits are changing that means probability is 0.5 and as the correlation factor increases then you can see the even lower order bits no are not changing much. So, the uh, bits are changed from say bits, bits 7 to 14 therefore, they are uh, switching activity is reducing uh, 7 to 10 7 to 11 this is the switching activity of the bits are changing as the uh, correlation is increasing. On the other hand, if the data is anti-correlated that means, they are changing fast. So, it may so happen that data is changing fast like this. So, data is changing quickly. So, it is anti-correlated we can see in this particular case it is uh, it is uncorrelated anti-correlated. So, in, in such a situation depending on uh, what kind of anti-correlation is there the switching activity is increasing uh, from for bits starting from 7 to 11 as you can see. Uh, it is increasing and also higher order bits it is increasing that means, including sine bit it is increasing. So, uh, of course, the if the dynamic range is small then of then then obviously, uh, it will move towards this, but for this particular dynamic range 3 sigma is equal to 2 to the power 11 this is the situation. So, you can see that transition probability uh, is dependent on two parameters one is the bandwidth or the dynamic range of the signal and second is the correlation factor and depending on that the number of transitions on different bits will vary which is represented by these plots. Okay. Now, let us consider the same situation for sign magnitude representation previous one was for 2's complement representation. Now, you have come to 2's complement sign magnitude representation here as you can see uh, you see the uh, except the sign bit all other bit for all other bits the transition probability is always less than 0 0.5. And not only that uh, as the uh, as the correlation increases the uh, the pro transition probability of the sign bit as well as the other bits reduces. So, transition probability of other bits starting from bit 6 reduces uh, for sign magnitude representation.
and it never becomes more than 0 0.5 because in this as you have seen in case of sign magnitude representation we have seen that the uh, the number of transitions will be always uh, less and uh, even with uh, anticorrelated data the number of transitions will never exceed 0 0.5 and as a consequence the the for sign magnitude representation the transition activity is much less compared to that of two's complement representation and obviously, uh, this reduction will be more and more if the uh, if the bandwidth is less and also the uh, data is highly correlated and as the uh, data becomes anticorrelated that means, switching occurs more frequently between positive and negative then of course, uh, the sign between change more frequently if the data is uncorrelated. Okay. Now, there is another uh, another uh, plot where the transition for two's complement data uh, is plotted on the y axis again as, as a signal dynamic range by peak amplitudes. So, as I told the uh, it depends on two parameters the correlation factor and the dynamic range. As you can see the signal uh, as the signal dynamic range is increasing the the probe the uh, transition activity is increasing. And, uh, and and whenever it is highly an, uh, anticorrelated the the transition activity is much less compared to when it is highly correlated when rho is equal to 0.99 and point for point rho is equal to 0 you can see it is uh, roughly point 0.8 because it is a i mean it will be 8 because it is a 16 bit number so the transition and the number of transitions for two's complement will be point 0.8 when rho is equal to zero, will be 8 for rho is equal to 0 so for 16 bit number and uh, number of transitions will be 8. And for 0.99 MSB do not switch at all and for minus uh, 0.99 MSB switches frequently and as a consequence the uh, the variation of the transitions for two's complement representation uh, takes place in this way depending on the values of dynamic range and the uh, uh, the correlated correlation among different data. Now, let us consider this in the situation for um, sign magnitude form. Uh, so, number of transition for two's complement by sign magnitude. So, it has been normalized with respect to uh, two's complement representation. So, here you find the uh, here as we here uh, for highly anticorrelated form sorry highly highly anti anticorrelated form the reduction is less but whenever it is the uh, when it is highly correlated it reduces significantly this ratio is quite large so number of transitions for two's complement by sign magnitude here the reduction is quite i mean of course uh, you can see it also changes with the dynamic range but uh, and as the dynamic range increases the ratio is less and uh, as the dynamic range is small the ratio is more. In other words maximum reduction occurs in uh, switching activity when the dynamic range is small and data is uh, very un anticorrelated. So, uh, reduction uh, is achieved whenever it is anticorrelated and small it. In other words uh, this suggests when you will use when you will choose uh, sign magnitude representation you will choose sign magnitude representation for sending over the bus when the dynamic range is small and data is anticorrelated. If the dynamic range is large and data is correlated, you may not get the uh, benefit of using sign magnitude representation. Okay. <coughs> now, let us focus on uh, architectural optimizations. Uh, including number representation for arithmetic computation, the ordering of operations, the resource utilization and we shall discuss techniques for minimizing glitching activity. Coming to uh, uh, again uh, two's complement representation of an accumulator, this is a operation uh, you know a large number of sample values are added or accumulated in many DSP applications say 1000 sample values are accumulated and that is being used after accumulating 1000 sample values. 
So, this is what is being done by this hardware. So, here you can see you are applying clock at the rate of 64 megahertz. Here the data is only 4 bit and that is being uh, added uh, keep and that is being accumulated kept on adding for 1000 different values and after the accumulation has taken place for 1000 different values, the final result is taken out from the output of the adder uh, with the help of uh, this uh, latch uh, which is operating at 64 kilohertz. So, you can see uh, this one thing which is <coughs> not shown here, here we are doing sign extension because you have to add as you can see after accumulating for 1000 times the the size of the number of bits that may be required is 14 bit. That is the reason why the adder is of 60 14 bit, but here the data is of 4 bit. So, you have to do sign extension before you perform addition with a 14 bit number and as a consequence as you do sign extension and then uh, you know if the sign changes frequently then lot of switching activity will occur and that will lead to a uh, lot of switching activity within this adder and uh, and you know this, this happens because of sign extension of this number because dynamic range is small only 4 bit but you are adding with 14 bit number so whenever you do this if you plot the switching activity at different point you can see at the adder output the switching activity is very high the reason for that as i told at uh, this adder output what is happening you are doing uh, sign extension uh, sign extended value of data you are adding with the 14 bit number and uh, as a consequence at this point adder output will have lot of intermediate transitions leading to high switching activity on the other hand after the addition is performed you know that uh, the, the then in the in latch data will not have that much switching activity here you know uh, the, this uh, in this case uh, here here you can see uh, the current sum will not have that much switching activity. So, here there is effect of kind of low pass filtering. So, as you as you keep on adding data uh, the switching activity gradually reduces there is a kind of gradual uh, <coughs> you know smoothness on the curve and as a result you get lesser and lesser switching activity uh, in higher bit numbers. Uh, lower bit num I mean uh, higher bit numbers do not change at all, but you can see uh, the switching activity is much less in the current sum, but uh, in this the in latch data the sign extension part will have 0.5 switching activity and this the lower part 4 bit will have 3 bit which is essentially magnitude again will have <coughs> switching activity close to 0.5. So, on these 3 lines uh, we, we have seen he here here and here how the switching activity changes and of course, uh, <coughs> the switching activity is maximum at this point. How can we reduce the power dissipation due to high switching activity by changing the architecture of implementing this accumulator? What we can do? We can, uh, we can trade silicon area for lower switching activity. That means, we can use some additional hardware to achieve lower switching activity. And for example, implementation of an accumulator using tubes complement can be done uh, in a different way. We can do uh, accumulator implementation using uh, sign magnitude representation. And in sign magnitude representation, you know computation is for positive and negative data is kept separate. How, how it is being done? What you can do? So, depending on whether the data is positive or negative, you separate out the data and do the additions of positive data in one part and negative data by using another part. Then finally, when the accumulation has taken place, then you perform subtraction between the two accumulated data to get the final result. So, you will get the <coughs> We will, we will get the lower switching activity uh, at the cost of double switch uh, silicon area. So, as you can see uh, how the, this is done, this is done in this particular implementation. So, in this case uh, the sign bit has been used to channelize the data either to this part or to this part. So, you know this uh, gated clock is uh, realized 
or gated clock is implemented with the help of the sign bit and if the data is positive then the uh, then it is then this latch is enabled and uh, accumulation is done by this part similarly if the data is negative then this latch is enabled and uh, the accumulation is done by this part so you can see although your uh, input data is in two's complement form but you are doing you are doing the additions with the help of two separate hardware one for positive numbers another for negative numbers and as a consequence the switching activity uh, in this hardware or in this hardware will be much less because you are only passing positive data so the sign extended part will remain same because all are positive similarly if it is negative data sign extended part will be all one in this case and in this case sign extended part will be all zero in this case and as a consequence the switching activity uh, at the output of this uh, of this uh, this particular adder one will be adder will be much less compared to two's complement form and uh, after uh, performing this at high speed you know uh, you after you have done these additions you will of course perform final uh, uh, final subtraction at lower rate 64 kilohertz that means after th thousand uh, accumulation of thousand data has taken place you will now shift it to in a one uh, adder i mean subtractor it is doing subtraction positive accumulated and negative accumulated data and then you are finally getting the uh, accumulated data at the output 14 bit data so here we are not sacrificing throughput only th thing that we are doing we are trading area for lower switching activity by duplicating the hardware and let us see the uh, <coughs> transition activity for uh, two different situation the upper cup this this particular this dotted lines they that correspond to two's complement <coughs> implementation so here the that the sum output uh, you can see there is there is lot of switching activity on the other hand these three lines correspond to this uh, sign magnitude implementation you can see either for sum a or sum b sum a or sum b means you can see sum a or sum b means here uh, you are doing sum a and you are doing sum b so sum a and sum b the switching activity is much less and and of course whenever you are doing that sign magnitude uh, you know that sum a plus sum b <coughs> in sign magnitude form when you are doing addition then of course you have little more switching activity but you can see the uh, that uh, switching activity in this part uh, here you are doing at a lower frequency 64 kilohertz at a, as a consequence the uh, the uh, the uh, since it is multiplied by a factor of f you know uh, the switching activity uh, at the output of this adder will not increase the uh, switch capacitance much because you are you will be multiplying by factor f so here you are doing at the rate of megahertz and here you will be doing at the rate of kilohertz so as a consequence the overall reduction in the power dissipation will be much more in this implementation and uh, you can see here uh, some another some experiment has been done for data with different correlation factor the first in the first case you are feeding constant constant means you are not changing the input at all so when you are feeding uh, in the constant value data is highly correlated and whenever data is highly correlated as we have as we know it will not make much change uh, much difference for sign magnitude or two's complement because the switching activity is dependent on the uh, correlation factor so when it is highly correlated it will not make much difference however since the sign magnitude implementation has got larger area capacitance that will lead to uh, larger power dissipation so when you are feeding constant value n is equal to 7 then you can see input pattern your constant input pattern you are feeding for 1024 cycles then the power dissipations in two's complement uh, implementation is 1.97 milliwatt whereas for sign magnitude implementation power is uh, 2.25 volt uh, using the same supply voltage of 3 volt in both the cases however if you use a ramp in case of ramp you are essentially uh, it is also correlated 
you are increasing and decreasing. So, you are increasing from minus 7, here it is 0, uh, then you are making it. So, here uh, not like this, here minus 7 to 0 and then plus 7. So, you are doing, you are essentially ramp. So, that means plus 7. Then in this way you are doing. So, minus 7 to 0 plus 7 and you are you are changing in this way, you are using a ramp. Then the again you are putting this value minus 7, 0 plus 7. So, this is how you are applying your data. So, in this particular case uh, data is also uh, correlated, it is not that it is not correlated, it is also correlated. So, when there is correlation as you can see you do not get much benefit in sign magnitude implementation because of larger capacitance. So, here also there is no reduction in power dissipation, but there is increase in power dissipation in sign magnitude realization. On the other hand, when you have got random data, data is changing, I mean it can have any value, any bit uh, has the probability of transition of 0.5. In such a case, uh, it is a random data and as a consequence you can see two's complement representation or uh, rather uh, realization based on, uh, based on two's complementation gives you uh, 3.42 milliwatt compared to 2.5 watt 51 milliwatt that you can achieve by using a, re a realization based on sign magnitude form. So, this gives you reduction in the uh, power dissipation because of lesser switching activity or lesser switch capacitance. Now, here is an Im uh, here is a extreme case, here you are changing between say uh, minus 7 to plus 7. So, you are changing minus 7 to plus 7, not this way, minus 7, then plus 7, then minus 7, then plus 7, this way you are changing. So, in this case uh, data you can say extremely anticorrelated. So, in whenever it is highly anticorrelated, then you know we get uh, good benefit uh, using sign magnitude representation as it is evident uh, from this uh, particular result. So, we find that for two's complement uh, realization, realization based on two's complement we get 5.28 milliwatt compared to 2.46 milliwatt whenever you do uh, sign magnitude uh, based uh, realization. Okay. <coughs> Now, we, we switch gear, uh, we consider another technique, ordering of input signals. You know switching activity can be reduced by optimizing the ordering of operation. So, here what you are doing, uh, for example, multiplying a signal with constant coefficient, this operation can be comp uh, composed into shifted operations. So, sometimes you can reduce uh, switching activity by by changing the ordering of operation. Let us consider a simple example where you have to perform, uh, consider a multiplication in which it is decomposed into three additions. So, what you have done? You have, you, uh, you have to ultimately add three numbers, one is in, another is in into 2 to the power minus 7, that can be achieved by shifting the data. Uh, by 7 times towards right that is effect that is effectively dividing by 2 to the power 7 and another is in into uh, shifting the data by 8 times towards right essentially it is division by 2 to the power 8. So, this these three data uh, have to be added obviously, the magnitude of this number uh, <coughs> which is which has been shifted 7 times towards right or the number which has been shifted 8 times towards right their magnitude will be much less. So, whenever you have to add these three data, you have got two possible topologies. In the first case, you will perform addition <coughs> of the in with in into uh, 2 to the power minus 7 and then you add with that, uh, that partial result you add with in into 2 to the power minus 8. So, you can do in this way, in this order or you can do the addition, first you add the smaller numbers in into 2 to the power minus 7 plus in into 2 to the power minus 8 and then you add this intermediate result with, uh, with the, uh, the initial value in. So, we can do it in these three ways and let us see the result. So, in this case we are adding a large number with a small number and again a large number with a small number 
as a consequence you know you have to do uh, here you have to do sign extension, here you have to do sign extension uh, to do the additions and as a result the switching activity is quite high as you can see both at the output of sum 1 and sum 2, but you can perf perform the same thing without losing the without uh, sacrificing correctness of data. You can use the property of associativity and commutativ uh, commutativity to uh, perform the same operation by adding the two smaller number first, then adding it with the uh, larger number. And as you do that, as you can see, since you are adding two smaller numbers, obviously uh, the switching activity at the output of sum 1 will be much less. As you can see, it is much less switching activity, particularly in the higher order bits, there will be no change at all. Uh, switching activity will be much less. On the other hand, of course, here we are ad adding a small number with a large number. In that case, switching activity will be comparable to the sum 2 of the previous situation. So, we find that at least at the output of one adder, you are able to reduce the switching activity significantly by using uh, this particular topology of implementation. And here, uh, <coughs> you know the same thing uh, shown in a different way transition probability and how the bit numbers are changing uh, how it is changing for different bit numbers here it is in 7 in 8 and you are, you are doing addition of these two numbers and you can see uh, how the <coughs> addi uh, how how the adder output uh, reduces the switching activity that you have already seen and whenever you perform addition of these two numbers obviously the initial implementation uh, when you do add did addition we using these two numbers switching activity was larger because you are uh, you are adding with a small number with a large number <coughs> so uh, sign bit correlation is one for uh, for different numbers that correlation is shown for different values obviously for smaller numbers there is larger co correlation among the higher order bits but whenever you are using you know that uh, smaller number and it, and a larger number that correlation is different as you can see. So, uh, transition probability for three different signals are shown here and based on that we got this result this transition probability of the sum 1, sum 2 and uh, for the output of these adders. Okay. <coughs> now, we shall consider another interesting situation. Uh, th this is regarding optimizing resource utilization. You know we have there are two choices time multiplex architectures versus fully parallel architecture. So, you can have time mul multiplex architecture or you can have fully parallel architecture. This I can explain with a uh, with an example of our uh, <coughs> you know the microprocessors. Uh, I do not know whether you have studied that 8 bit popular microprocessor that is your 8085 by Intel. Uh, this in, in this processor uh, you, may rec you may remember that uh, it had uh, a 8 to 15 was coming out this is the higher order address address bus, but the data bus and lower order address bus. So, A D 0 to 7 that means, what does it mean? It means that same bus you are using for sending data as well as address. So, that was being done in, in your 8085. So, we used to call it uh, bus multiplexed. So, you are multiplexing the bus. So, initially you are sending the data which is being latched in the memory. Normally, you have got a memory here, main memory. <coughs> So, this lower order ad, so ALE signal was generated by the microprocessor that was latching the address first in the main memory, then uh, the, the data you were reading using the same lines. That means, the lower order address lines were sent using these lines first, then data were read or sent using the same lines in the in subsequent cycles. So, bus was time multiplexed. Obviously, this saved uh, large number of pins. So, number of pins was reduced by 8 and as a consequence you were able to realize the 8 bit microprocessor by using a 40 pin chip and as you know the cost of a chip is dependent on the number of pins. 
So, at that point of time, when 8 bit micro that 8085 was implemented, uh, it was uh, you know it was wiser to implement uh, using this time multiplexed bus, but you know it has one drawback. Whenever you do that, the switching activity uh, is very large on these lines. You know, on these lines, first you are sending address, then you are sending data. A uh, lot of switching activity will take place, and that will lead to large power dissipation. So, <coughs> this uh, this this uh, this this time multiplex implementation may may have good resource utilization. You are using the same bus to communicate uh, two different data in two different time instants or different cycles. Obviously, resource utilization is more, but the switching activity is much higher. <coughs> the deg degree of resource sharing should be optimized because resource sharing can destroy signal correlations and increase switching activity. For example, time sharing buses out of uh, I have already considered. Let us consider this, this example. Here you are taking output from two counters. These two counters uh, may be uh, you know uh, their counter uh, counters may not be correlated. One is counting uh, something, another is counting something that count value may be in the modulo of the counter may be different or uh, the rate at which counting is take place can be different. Now, you can use either a shared bus as it is shown here. In this case, instead of using two buses, you are using a single bus. Obviously, the capacitance will be less in this particular case. C B S that is your uh, that is the bus over which you are doing, uh, and you are uh, first you are sending this, then you are sending this, or you can have two separate buses. So the number of bus transition pass cycle is eight. The reason for that is you have got eight bit data, and since it is coming out from a counter, the the uh, number of bus transitions pass average value of the number of this transitions pass per pass cycle will be four. As you know, count value will change from uh, all 0 to all 1 and the uh, the average value will be 4. Now, <coughs> with this situation with this background let us see how the uh, number of bus transitions pass cycle changes in these two different situations. So, whenever we use parallel buses then you can see the, uh, the bus number of bus transition pass cycle remains fixed 4 it does not change because here you are taking from one counter and here you are taking from another counter and obviously, uh, the, the number of bus transitions per cycles remains constant. I mean average number of uh, <coughs> bus transitions per cycle remains constant that is 4. However, whenever you do multiplexing then you can see the number of transitions is little random in nature and it can attain very high peak value with minimum value of 4. So, you can see the switching activity on the shared bus or common bus is very large and <coughs> as a consequence in this particular case you will have large switching activity and, uh, and as a so you have to decide which particular system will use. For example, I was giving the example of this Intel microprocessor. So, in the earlier processors like 8085 and 80888 the bus was multiplexed but subsequently as the frequency was increased you know both 8085 and 808888 were operating in the range of few megahertz as the frequency increased subsequent in subsequent processor starting from 8086 to 80 uh, 286, 80386, 80486 or in Pentium in subsequent processors no bus multiplexing was done. Separate buses were provided essentially to reduce power dissipation, switching activity, the uh, switch high switching activity and also uh, you know that increases the throughput because you are uh, sending over different buses. So, this particular uh, technique I mean this uh, this shows uh, that uh, you know in so why the uh, bus were not multiplexed in subsequent processors. Okay. 
Then another technique that is your glitching power dissipation. Glitching power dissipation uh, you have already discussed that occurs because of uh, delay of, of the gates and I have already ex explained this particular uh, you know uh, that uh, the, the occurrence of this glitch because of the delay of this gate that take place and this glitch how can you reduce the glitching power dissipation. Glitching power dissipation can be reduced by using balanced implementation instead of cascaded implementation. So, if you use cascade uh, balanced implementation in this way you know the delay here and delay here is more or less same as a consequence that the output of this gate the switching activity will be much less. So, in this particular case there will be switching activity here and here O 2 and O 3 which will not be present here. So, uh, extra transitions can be minimized in or in other words the glitching power dissipation can be re reduced by balancing all signal paths and re reducing logic depth and also this reduces the logic depth. Uh, reducing uh, logic depth also reduces the delay of the critic that we know that delay of that uh, particular uh, uh, network. So, whenever you are realizing multi level implementation of uh, Boolean functions, it is advisable to use balanced circuit and uh, as much you know uh, as, mu as much reduction in logic depth as possible. <coughs> okay. Now, coming to the last topic you know I have already discussed about the use of different logic styles static uh, CMOS circuit, dynamic CMOS logic style and past, uh, past transistor logic. Nowadays you know most of the VLSI implementations are done by using static CMOS primarily because CAD tools are available for matured CAD tools are available for based on static CMOS. Unfortunately matured CAD tools are not available for uh, logic realization using uh, dynamic CMOS or past transistor logic. So, one experimentation was done by developing suitable CAD tool uh, by realizing dynamic CMOS and past transistor logic. I shall show you, uh, I have already discussed uh, the advantages and disadvantages of static CMOS, dynamic CMOS. So, I am not going into the details at this moment. So, let us come to the uh, final result. <coughs> where we have implemented uh, this same circuit, same benchmark circuits C432, I mean these are discussed benchmark circuits uh, with uh, um, and you can see the number of transistors required in different cases and um, we have implemented by using static CMOS, dynamic CMOS and PTL, first transistor logic. So, the uh, tools CAD tools were developed that means automated uh, implementation were done to realize using uh, static CMOS or dynamic CMOS or past tense logic and we find that the <coughs> reduction in the area delay and power for dynamic CMOS and here is the reduction in area delay and power in past tense logic. So, we find that the uh, if, you re if you realize the same circuit using dynamic CMOS there can be 16 percent reduction in area. 30 percent, 37 percent reduction in delay and 25 percent reduction in power dissipation. So, the reduction in energy which is power delay product is quite significant may be more than 50 percent. Similarly, whenever you realize using past transistor logic which I have already discussed in detail, you can see on the average 33 percent reduction in area take place because past transistor logic realization requires a lesser number of transistors as you can see the number of transistors required uh, has been shown here which is representative of the area and then the, the reduction in delay is 47 percent uh, using past transistor logic and power reduction in power dissipation is 17 percent. So, we find there is significant reduction in area delay and power. So, with this we have con come to the end of two, uh, today's lecture. And here is a reference, the various techniques that you have discussed today uh, has been taken from a book by Anand P. Chandrakashan and Robert W. Borderson. The title of the book is Low Power Digital CMOS Design uh, by uh, published by Cluar Academic Publi Publishers, uh, it was published sometime in 1995. So, with this we have come to the end of uh, uh, on the on various lectures on minimizing switch capacitance.
in the, in, the, in the next lecture, we shall start our discussion on minimizing leakage power dissipation. Thank you.